is a beautiful world. The book is called Fifth Sun、uh, because the Aztecs believe that we are living under the fifth sun, that, it, that the world has been made and remade、uh, five times. That's Camilla Townsend, a history professor at Rutgers and the author of a new book called Fifth Sun, which documents the story of the Aztecs from an entirely new perspective, from the Aztecs themselves. I wanted to write a book about Aztec history because even though there are lots of books out there and have been for many years, they're all based on Spanish sources, and they give us a sense of the Aztecs as brutal people, really, truly savages.、Uh, and in fact, they were not. They were human beings just like the rest of us. Five hundred years ago, the Aztecs were a group of nomadic farmers who built one of the greatest empires in history. Their capital city was built on an island in the middle of Lake Texcoco in modern-day Mexico City. They developed remarkable techniques of engineering and architecture to build causeways, aqueducts, palaces, and pyramids. With legions of skilled labor and advanced engineering, they grew their empire and spread. Out across the Great Valley of Mexico, assimilating neighboring tribes and building transport routes to both coasts. So, if you're looking down at a map of Mexico, there's literally a ring of mountains in the center,、uh, around what used to be a, a great lake. It's a, a deep basin,、um, and they, the Aztecs and other related peoples, lived there in that central basin. The Aztec city was called Tenochtitlan, and it was on an island in the middle of a great lake in the center of the, the, the Valley of Mexico. And on that island, they had massive pyramid temples, long straight avenues, huge markets—markets markets that were bigger than most of the markets in Europe.、Uh, they had aqueducts bringing fresh water from across the lake on the, the shore.、Uh, they had. Uh, concerts in front of the the temples where the Aztec kings lived. They had libraries of painted、um, scrolls. It was a beautiful and impressive sight. In 1519, during the leadership of Moctezuma, a Spanish conquistador named Hernan Cortez landed with 500 of his men on the Gulf of Mexico, and with advanced weaponry and the aid of neighboring conquered tribes, Cortez led an attack on the Aztec that resulted in the empire's annihilation. The Mesopotamians were stunningly impressive. But they could not have defeated Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire, working in combination with the Pope. Had the young indigenous writers of the late 16th century known all of this, it would have been a relief to their minds. But that relief was denied them, and so they participated in constructing a version of events that Montezuma would have derided. But that he had no power to change from the land of the dead. After the conquest of the Aztecs, the Spanish controlled history's narrative. But now, thanks to new technology and translations, we have the Aztecs' side of the story. Aztec culture was an entirely oral culture.、Uh, they did have books、uh, with pictographic writing, but these were used uh, to uh, keep track of prayers and ceremonies, land grants, taxes that were owed. For stories and poetry, it was entirely oral, so they really valued that skill. People who could speak well and tell a good story or chant a good chant were were welcome at every gathering.、Uh, so they got very, very good at it. It was a high art form,、uh, and in story form, they kept track of their histories. They kept track of religious tales.、Uh, they kept track of、uh, what they believed the gods had done in the past and would do again.、Uh, so. When we read their histories, what we're really reading are lots and lots of stories. That's made my job easier. I was able to write their history because, in their own way, they were keeping it as a story. The Aztecs began to write their stories down when the Spanish friars arrived, the monks who taught them the Roman alphabet in order to learn to read the Bible. A key element in all of this is the fact that when the Spanish friars arrived. Uh, some with Cortez, and then more afterwards, they taught indigenous boys, mostly and young men, the Roman alphabet because they wanted them to learn to read the Bible. And the boys learned it and did read the Bible, but they also took that alphabet home. 
and they would ask their uncles or their grandfathers, you know, tell me the histories that you used to tell. And the old men would begin to speak, and the boys would write down those words in their own language, using our letters, the Roman letters, to sound it out. So the word I is me, and they would write N-I to represent me. And they'd keep going like that until they had written down the whole history that their, that their grandfathers used to tell. One thing Townsend discovered was that the Aztecs were far more peaceful than history has taught us and that their side of the story is quite different than the Spanish version. There's a widespread misconception that the Aztecs thought the Europeans were gods. Uh, the specific version of this story is that Montezuma thought that Hernando Cortez was Quetzalcoatl returning from the east, a god that, according to the story, had been expected to return. This entire narrative was made up in the late 1500s uh, by Franciscan friars, and then some of their Native American students did adopt the story. But in the older records that are closer, come from closer to the time of conquest, there's no evidence of anything like that. They were not expecting a god to return. They did not usually think that any human beings could be gods. There's nothing in their stories that indicates they thought that. So we're pretty sure it's just something that the Franciscans thought. Also in Aztec culture, children were revered and women were powerful. One thing that the Aztecs teach us is that even in a warrior culture, such as theirs was, women often have equal voices. Certainly in their world, women were not afraid to speak up. Women ran the markets. Uh, women participated in telling stories and telling poetry. Men seem to value women's perspectives. One of the stories that appears in various versions most often is about an Aztec princess who has been captured by her people's enemies and is about to be sacrificed. Um, and she is supposed to be terrified or casting aspersions on her enemies. Those are the Aztecs we think we know. Um, but in fact, she was seek in this story, she's seeking desperately to hang on to her dignity squaring her shoulders, trying to speak loudly and saying to the people round about, you can kill me now, but you cannot kill my people. But my people's children and their children's children will still survive. And one day you will regret oh, this war that you have made against us and treating me this way. I didn't expect to find um, in, the, in their histories an Aztec woman sounding so plaintive um, and so proud, so dignified. Townsend learned that many aspects of ancient Aztec culture are still alive today. I think it's very fair to say that in many ways Aztec culture does live on. There are literally more than a million speakers of the Aztec language in Mexico today, and in fact some of them uh, now live in the United States as migrants. But more than that, it isn't just that, they, that their language survives, but beautiful aspects of their culture also survive. The idea that everyone's point of view in a community is important and that everyone's point of view should be represented in history uh, still lives on in, in modern communities in Mexico. The idea that every part of a community should participate in carrying the weight of a public event or a public duty so that no one group has to pay for everything and do all the work. That idea is very much alive in, in modern little towns in Mexico. The idea that men and women are both important, that you need both uh, for a happy world and, and that their peaceful coexistence uh, is central to the future. The idea that children are, of all people, the most important and must be loved and laughed with uh, also is still very vibrant, very much alive in modern Mexican villages. So I think it is very true to say that Aztec culture does live today. Townsend says one of the most beautiful parts of the Aztec culture is that it was based on reciprocity and mutuality. The most beautiful part of the Aztec culture is that it was based on reciprocity, on mutuality. Men and women needed each other, grown-ups and children, different communities, different townships, all conceived of themselves as being important, but of the others as being important as well. And in their public events, they always made sure that everybody was represented. They believed very much that society would function better if everybody 
had a say over their own future. It would never have occurred to them to have a population of people who were always destined to be enslaved because it was so important to them to feel that everybody had a stake in society. That's Camilla Townsend talking about her book, Fifth Son, A New History of the Aztecs. You can find out more at abeautiful.world. I'm Heather McElhatton, and this is A Beautiful World, NPR News. Brought to you with help from the Polad Family Foundation.